so we all get artist block, right? One of my favourite ways to combat artist block is using art challenges, and there are so many of them over on Instagram. I'm actually taking part in Mermaid right now, and I'm trying to do every single day. So you can go and check that out on my Instagram. But for the topic of this video, sometimes I need a little bit more direction than just a prompt word. And that's where Draw This In Your Style challenges have come in. And if you haven't heard of a Draw This In Your Style challenge, or D-T-I-Y-S for short, it's when an artist posts one of their pieces and invite other artists to recreate their piece with their own style. I find it a great way to identify and refine my own style at the same time as building and developing brand new skills. And I just love going through all the entries and seeing everyone's different styles creating this one same piece I think it's it's so fun to see these challenges can be a little bit intimidating if you've never taken part in them before but I'm here to try and demystify it for you and to share my approach when it comes to draw this in your style challenges with you just a small disclaimer everyone works differently so my process may not work perfectly for you but I'm hoping it will help you to identify parts that would and put together your own workflow the challenge I'll be working on in this video is by my friend Greta she does the most incredible illustrations so you should definitely go and check out her Instagram I'll link it below and also up here. One of these days, I'll know which way. This is her original piece. My style is a bit semi-realistic at the moment, so it's really fun to try and translate her character into what my style is. Before we start, I'll be working digitally using Procreate on my iPad mini, but you can take part in these challenges using any medium you like. Let's go ahead and get started. <laughs> So the very first step, obviously, is to get your Draw This In Your Style original. So I'm going to hit Instagram and I'm going to open that up. So this is the piece I'll be recreating in my own style. And now I need to find references because obviously I have this, this picture, but I need photo references to get the lighting and the posing that I need. I'm not looking for someone who looks like what I'm trying to create. I'm looking for someone who is in the right pose, who has the right lighting. So I end up picking two and then picking between them. This is my own Pinterest board full of people I would like to draw one day. <laughs> so here you can see me picking between the two. I end up choosing this one. I think it's a more dynamic pose. It works a little bit better for the character and the lighting is much more interesting. So now that we've picked our reference, I start off always in the sketchbook in Procreate. This isn't automatically there, but if you want a short that shows you how to create one, let me know. And I'm using, I can't remember exactly, but it's either the technical pencil or the 6B pencil. I don't tend to use that at the moment, but I like it. So we all have our own techniques of drawing heads and faces, and mine is the standard circle, disregard the circle, and just draw on top of it. I always start with the nose. I find it's really easy to center everything and work out the placement of other features once you've got the nose in. And my priority at the moment is not to get the character looking like I want them to. It's just my priority is getting the positioning, the proportions and the pose right before I start adding any more detail. One of the wonderful parts of digital painting is that you can reposition elements the whole way through and you don't have to erase it and redo it and I love that. A lot of people will tell you not to use a reference and that it's cheating and I wholeheartedly disagree. I think it's incredibly important to use a reference. If only to help you get the proportions and the pose and the lighting right. It's so hard to do from your imagination or your memory and I can't visualise anything in my head so it's even harder. I use references for every single piece of art I use and sometimes you wouldn't recognise the reference from the piece. Like they don't look similar but they have helped me along the way. And if you're someone who struggles to draw faces, honestly, the best tip I can give you is practice. And I know that sounds really annoying because you want to hear a perfect quick tip that you don't have to put any effort into. But 
honestly what I've done is created a Pinterest board full of interesting faces and different poses and different ethnicities and it's really helped me if I don't know what I want to draw I'll go onto that board pick a face that speaks to me and I'll just draw it and it's really gone such a long way into helping me learn how different features fit on people's faces and how I can stylize them but still hold on to what makes them special. see here that I'm using liquify to slightly nudge parts around. I'll use the lasso tool to move bigger sections but if something just needs a slight nudge or a slight curve liquify is so much easier. I learned that tip from Sam Does Arts and now I use it all the time. What you're seeing here is I'm flipping the canvas. Um, another tip I learned from Sam Does Arts, but flipping the canvas helps to kind of reset your brain because you can look at something for too long and not really notice what's wrong with it. But if you flip the canvas, you'll see it straight away and you'll think, how did I miss that? It looks so weird. <laughs> I did that this morning for one of my mermaid pieces. I had like completely finished it and then I was like mm, something's not right and I flipped the canvas and the face was so messed up so I fixed it with liquify and it was brilliant but I'm really glad I remembered because it makes a huge difference you'll think it looks fine and then you'll flip it and it won't look fine so here I finished getting the pose and the proportions right and now I'm actually adding elements of Greta's character into my piece so this beautiful long straight hair the high elf ears clothing that she's wearing which I definitely need to work on clothing and folds in clothing so that's something I will be doing in the future So I'm happy with the general shape of the face and the look of it, but now I need to add that really gorgeous sort of facial tattoo detailing and I really struggled with this because it's quite symmetrical and because I'm drawing the face at an angle, it was really hard to get it looking good. And looking at it now, this actually looks fine, but that just wasn't enough for me, so I hid all my layers and I drew it using the symmetry tool on Procreate, which I'd never used before, so that was quite fun. But it helped me to create this perfectly symmetrical design, which I could then put on her face and warp it to make it look like it was curving in the right direction. So now I'm taking a closer look at that original piece and seeing if there's anything I've missed. Now I'm naming that layer because in my sketchbook every single page is a different layer so I name them to keep track. Let me know if you would like a Procreate sketchbook tour and I will do that for you. So now I'm going ahead, I'm copying the layer that I've done this sketch on and I'm going to put it onto uh, just an plain A3 canvas to start the main piece. I completely forgot to screen record this next bit because it was the next day. I'll pick it up later but for now you can see I'm, pu I've, I'm putting down the base background colour which is not what it's going to be but it'll give me a better idea of the colours of the skin and the hair. And now I'm putting down just the flat colours for different elements and I'm keeping them on different layers. That way I can go ahead and change the hue and change the colour slightly until I'm happy with it before I start shading and detailing and rendering. Thank you. 
So here you can see I'm changing the hues of things slightly to make the colors come out how I want them to. And now I'm going ahead and starting the rendering. I use the same brush as I use for the base color, but I lower the opacity. The opacity is usually at like 70, 75%. I always start with the shading and I pop this on another layer, but I'll do all the rendering on that other layer except for the highlights. My styles have developed a little bit since this piece, but I'm working on adding more hard edge shadows. You'll notice in this piece a lot of it is very soft and I'm trying to make it a little bit more dramatic and add a few more angles to my work. But I think all the soft shading works really well in this face because I feel like she has quite a soft and rounded face. I'd love to know your favourite ways of combating artist block. Like I mentioned, I love art challenges. I think they're an excellent way to get back into the creative headspace. But I've seen some people who will just draw from life and that's the thing that brings in their inspiration, their creativity. I struggle a little more with that. I don't know why. Maybe it's because I did so much of that when I was in art school and I, I didn't like art school at all. So I dropped out twice. Let it be known that you do not need to go to art school to be an artist. Finally, I remembered that I'd forgotten to start the screen recording, so now you get the screen recording. So I'm going in now with a highlight, and I do this on another layer. I'll use the base skin tone, and the layer is set to add. It really adds this wonderful glowy effect that I could recreate, but I'm lazy. And now I'm adding the blush, ever important. I love adding blush to my portraits. And I tend to do that on a hard light layer with quite a dark tone and it translates really well. And don't ask me what I was doing here with the lips. I did not know, that's why I undid it and started over. And remember, if you're drawing teeth or eye whites, they are very rarely perfectly white. So make them gray, varying shades of gray, depending on the lighting. Don't make them stark white because it won't look right. So I'm trying to maintain that two-tone lip that she's got in the original piece, but I didn't want the bottom to be skin tone because I didn't think it would quite work with my art style, so I just made it a slightly darker tone of the natural skin tone. and add a little bit of a glossy highlight because I like it. 
And remember, when you're drawing teeth, they curve around the like the skull. They're not like straight across. If you don't do shading on the edge, it's going to look really weird. They're going to look like they have too many teeth. And that's a little bit uncanny valley, right? don't try to define every single tooth. You can see I'm doing little indents at the bottom to bring out kind of the shape of all the teeth, but I'm not drawing lines in between each one because that's when it starts to look really strange. So my eyes I do on another layer. I'll add the white and then I'll do a clipping mask on the top to add the iris. At the moment I'm not really doing like black pupils so I'm just doing a darker tone of blue and it goes really well with Greta's style as well and the way that she's drawn the eyes in her original. I'm still working on the way I like to draw irises and pupils. I haven't quite got there yet. I use a light pen to add the glow and then I use a chromatic aberration on that to kind of, you may have seen the trick on TikTok where they'll add like a dot of blue and a dot of red and then the highlight in the middle. Chromatic aberration is effectively that but it does it automatically. I struggle with eyelashes and I don't know why because in theory I know what they should look like and they probably look fine they just don't look like the way I want them to but the problem is I don't know the way I want them to so how can I make that happen? And here you can see I forgot the eyebrows again I always forget the eyebrows and I come back to them at the end. I'd love to know if you like being able to see the whole process like this and consequently having a long video or if you'd rather I cut out a lot more so that you could have a shorter video to watch. So let me know what you'd prefer because I'll try and do that. I just feel like I'm cheating people if I cut out parts. Now I'm rendering the hair and I start with just the basic shading where there would naturally be shading. I'm a lot rougher with the hair, I just want to get an impression of the shape of it more than full deep detail and individual hairs. The highlights are what really bring it together. Really enjoying playing with like texture brushes here. I really like the half tone brushes and the hatching, the hatch brushes. I like that they can give the hair just a little bit more interest without having to do perfect hair detailing. Now 
and going over that tattoo and trying to make it look like it's glowing. I'm actually using the light pen to do this, but you can recreate it by just drawing it in a white pen, duplicate the layer and then Gaussian blur the bottom layer. The light pen just saves some extra steps. And then because I've made the tattoo glowing, I need it reflected slightly on the hair that sort of overhangs it. I've cut out the detailing for the clothing, but it was just a gold pen to draw all the leaves and stuff. And then just the odd bit of shading, but it's not the greatest shading because I still need to practice shading clothing. I wasn't too worried about the clothing for this piece because it's definitely not a focal point of the piece. It's just kind of there. And you may notice I tried to sort of condense my layers a lot. So where I've done several layers for the rendering of the skin, I've merged them all into one. And then if I need to fix things, I'll just color pick and do that. At this point, I was really struggling with backgrounds. I'm getting better with that, especially with Mermaid, but I just used the dry brush to go over with various shades of blue. And I really wanted to add an homage to the square that Greta has in the background of hers. So I went ahead and added that as well. I think it adds a really nice framing for the piece. Just a few finishing touches and that's it. That is the piece. So that's the finished piece. I hope you've enjoyed watching my workflow today and learned a little bit from it and how to construct your own workflow and how to approach Draw This In Your Styles. So if you have done any Draw This In Your Style challenges, go ahead and leave your Instagram handle in the comments below and I'll go ahead and take a look. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and drop me a like. And if you want to see more art related videos, then uh, please subscribe. <laughs>